let's just wait until everything else connects. Say live, yes, it does. Hey there, folks. Welcome to today's stream. And today, we're gonna be playing some College Hoops 2K6 for the PlayStation 2. So now I just gotta get it uh, loaded up. Uh, let me get it set up for you guys. All right, let's see how this goes. Go ahead and play the intro for you guys. Generate names. Okay, yeah, VIP one's fine. All right, let's just uh, yeah, may as well save it. And, oh, no, it just doesn't Can I? Oh yeah, I got her. Oh, that was, I clicked on online, not options. Uh, presentation. Can I get rid of? Any music? Yes. There we go. Oop, wait. Uh... Unless there was something I could have gotten rid of. Eh. We'll turn the sim length down to 10 minutes. Good. Alright. The Pontiac Tournament participated in any part the big tournament or the any tournament mode, in, conference tournament mode, and every darn it, any conference tournament mode in the game. Uh, legacy mode is the main focus mode, where you take yourself and try to become one of the best head coaches in the country. This is rivalry mode going against your school's rivals and trying to beat them, I guess. So the big focus is the career. We're gonna focus. So we're gonna do that. Yes, you can customize comp. Can you? What does that mean? I have to do it. Okay. So yeah, you'd have to do it yourself. I didn't want this, so we'll... this is just to go back. Wait, I didn't want to do that. <laughs> Let's go back. So this was the first uh, college game in the 2K series to not have the PN branding. Didn't 
want customized comfort stuff. So pop up help. Everything else is good. All right. Now we can get to work. Let's do it the other way this time. Uh, yeah, 25. There we go. Glass, yes. You see two. There we go. All right. So basically, as you grow as a coach, you'll complete major objectives. And everyone, everyone you do gets you an attribute bonus. Unless you increase an attribute at the end of the season. We'll do teaching, offense, scouting, and discipline. I guess we'll make teaching a C plus. Right, so we gotta start at a small school. To start things off with. Hmm. I don't know half these schools because they got eliminated. <laughs> so we'll do one of the recently eliminated teams. We'll do uh, Texas Southern. Uh, we'll do Clayton. Can I? Nobody as good on defense. So we'll do since he's very good at scouting. Alright, let's go read our first email. Coach Bird, thank God you're here. We thought you might have to put a whistle on the janitor and send him out here. Oh, okay, so you Thanks. <laughs> All right, so it's time to start preseason recruiting. Of course, we're only going to look at... Oh, wait, no, we can't do that. We'll sort, we'll sort it by teams that have the most interest. This guy. I'm going to flinch. That... And we'll have lunch off the game tape. Hey, it's okay. You're here. And that's all that matters. Uh, uh, Clayton can put the game tape this time. We only got uh, four scholars. How about I do the column this time? All right. You know, I don't even know. I haven't even seen who we what we need yet. Can I see what he needs? I guess I can see from here. The four shooting guards. Okay, so we definitely need a center. There we go. So here's one of the things that, uh, yeah, hey, uh, here's one of the things that uh, 2K Sports did better than EA. 
I'm gonna simulate over here, and even though it doesn't involve us, we're gonna watch season preview show. Hi everyone, and welcome to our look ahead at what is sure to be another exciting season of NCAA basketball. I'm Greg Gumbel, along with my partner Clark Kellogg. We're glad to have you with us as we preview all the top teams and players in college basketball this year. And what better way to start than by showing you the best teams in the first top 25 poll of the season. Here are the top five teams in our preseason poll. The Connecticut Huskies are the number one team in the land. The Duke Blue Devils have staked a claim to the number two spot. The Texas Longhorns are just behind them at number three. The Arizona Wildcats come in as the number four team. The Oklahoma Sooners round out the top five heading into the season. So there you have it. What's your take on the group? Well, Greg, those are outstanding teams. You've got a little bit of everything. Outstanding coaching, terrific big men, some sharp shooters, strong defenders. This is a very strong group. The Connecticut Huskies are the early favorites from their perch on top of the pole. Even though they're in one of the toughest conferences in the nation, they have real potential this season. They're rightfully considered one of the best teams in the country. I'd look out for these guys down the stretch. They should be very good. The Duke Blue Devils are an interesting team in the number two spot. They were winners of 27 games a year ago. And they're going to have a hard time matching that win total. That's an awfully tough task for any team to match no matter how good they look on paper. The Texas Longhorn stand out as the number three team in the preseason poll. They reached the tournament last year, but couldn't get out of the opening round. I think some tournament experience is better than none at all, so they should be better prepared if they get there this season, and I believe they will be there. The Arizona Wildcats are near the top, ranked fourth as we start the season. They're coming off a regular season championship in their conference last season. They have to be considered in the running to take that title this year as well. You've got to put them in the mix. The Oklahoma Sooners are in good position as the fifth ranked team in the nation. They were 25 game winners last year. Yep, and that's a real nice total. But I believe they've got the ability to add a few more wins to that amount this season. We'll see. Now let's have a look at the next group of teams in our top 25. What do you think of that group, Clark? I like this group of teams. It's an interesting collection. There are so many contrasting styles among these 10 teams that it's difficult to say who will get out of the gate the quickest when the season gets underway. The Boston College Eagle are a very intriguing team, it would seem. They were second place in their conference last year at the end of the regular season. They're obviously going to want to go one better than that this time around, and I think they have the ability to do so. The Villanova Wildcats also strike me as a team to keep an eye on. They got a small taste of tournament success last season when they reached the Sweet 16. Now they need to establish that same pattern of success in the regular season so they can carry the momentum into the postseason. All right, Clark, thanks. Let's move to the teams that round out our preseason top 25. What can you tell us about that group as a whole? The preseason poll is pretty top-heavy this year, but we shouldn't rule out a few surprise teams from this bunch making some noise before the season comes to a close. The Michigan State Spartans are worthy of a closer look. This team may provide us with a few surprises this season. A lot of the fans know about the stars on this team and what they can do, but there are some other players, non-marquee players, that could be ready to have breakout season. The Indiana Hoosiers could provide us with some storylines. They don't have many weaknesses. They really are a complete team. The thing I like most about this team is they're balanced on offense and defense. They really can take it to you for 40 minutes on both ends of the floor. All right, let's take a look at the guys on the court and move on to the top players in the nation. There before you are five preseason first-team All-Americans. These players are the best of the best in college basketball this season. Take us through the list, if you would, Clark. Jimenez is easily one of the best players in the college game today. He's a force to be reckoned with on the basketball court at both ends. We're just lucky to get to watch him play. He could be in for one of the biggest seasons in recent memory. Let's move on to the next first-teamer on the list. The Arizona Wildcats struck it rich the day this guy showed up on campus. Wouldn't you say, Clark? Lynch is another special player. This should be a season to remember for him. Just in terms of individual accomplishments, I see a lot of success for him this year. With his ability to read and exploit defenses, the sky's the limit. Continuing through the first team, let's take a look at another fantastic player. The Boston College Eagle are going to be very happy with the production they get out of this guy this year, I have a feeling. Hunt begins the year on the first team, and I think we'll see him there at the end of the year as well. What a talented all-around player this guy is. Keep an eye on his stats this season. 
Next on our list is a player who's sure to give the fans some thrills this year. The Oklahoma Sooner will be looking to him for inspiration and leadership. Conran gives him a go-to guy in more than one area. There is so much to like about him as a player. He's got that deadly combination of basketball IQ and physical skills that makes him so hard to guard. He's a solid player in every aspect. Last but not least in our rundown of this year's preseason All-Americans is this young man. The Duke Blue Devils have got to love having him to lead them into battle. Kenny is truly a treat to watch on the basketball court. He could star on any team in any conference in the nation. He's certainly deserving of a spot on the first team, and I just hope he gets the recognition he has coming to him this year. Now let's reveal our second team preseason All-Americans. Not much of a fall-off from the first team, I can tell you that. Let's get right into it. The Pittsburgh Panthers have a budding star on their hands right here, not to mention his pro potential. What a future he has in store for him. Monroe didn't miss out on the first team selection by much. You can be sure of that. Not only is he extremely talented, but they say he's one of the most coachable players in college hoop. But hey, I'd be coachable too if I were half as good a player as he is. Who wouldn't love to have this guy? Next up, another player that'll have the pro scouts drooling when he gets ready to make the jump from college. The Temple Owl. Lean on this guy quite a bit, and he rarely lets them down. Witherspoon is a tremendously talented player. We're looking at a bona fide player of the year candidate, Greg. He's right where he belongs on this list of All-Americans. Certainly our next player has earned his spot as one of the ten best players in the country. The Gonzaga Bulldog will look much better this season with this young man around. Cheryl is one of those guys who seems like he was born to play basketball. There is so much to like about him as a player. He's got that deadly combination of basketball IQ and physical skills that makes him so hard to guard. He's a solid player in every aspect. When our next player hits the court, the fans are always ready to stand up and pay attention. The Louisiana Tech Bulldog have made him one of the cornerstones of their team, and for good reason. Alexander is no surprise as a member of the All-American team. He's a wonderful player who does so many things well. He would be a leader on any team in the country. Let's move on to the last player on our list of the second team All-American. The Nevada Wolfpack have a few fans who are interested in watching his exploits this season. Craig is the final player on the list, but he's just as strong as our other four picks. I know how hard he's worked to reach this level, and he'll continue to work hard throughout the season. We're glad you could join us for the NCAA season preview. We hope you enjoy watching the season as much as we enjoy bringing it to you from the opening tip through the final four. So I wanted to let that play out. Yes, it is. This is the first... Uh... Yes, this was the first uh, 2K sports game, college game without uh, ESPN. Whoop. So... Should we... Oh, yeah, I can't. So he wants to be close to home. That may be an advantage to us. Not quite time yet to recruit him, though. He also wants to be close to home. That could, again, work on... Go ahead and... ...on the recruit. A lot of B plus intelligence. He's got a B on intelligence. This guy is leaping is out of B. And his quickness is a C. Add some hints. Yeah. Yeah, I need to, uh... Can I... Alright, let me see if I can... Can I change it all from here? Or? Now, how do I turn? Uh... 
Oh, there you go. I could have turned it all off in here. Not that it matters. Uh... Okay, yeah, so there's assistance. Good. I could use that. Go ahead and uh, quest the game tape for this three-star athlete. Yeah, everything else looks good. All right. Uh, am I allowed to redshirt players? This guy, Ali, will be redshirted. Uh, we can redshirt this guy, Willard Arm Willard Emerson. Yeah, I get what you're saying. Yeah, we're just re redshirting a few freshmen. Uh, I didn't check. I don't think so. Let me save the legacy so I could check real quick. I don't think it does. Like I said, the only one I know of that has Creator College is 2K8 for the PS3 and 360 versions. Uh, management. Oh, okay, yeah, you can. You can create a school. However, I do not believe. However, I do not believe that you can put it in a uh, dynasty mode. I don't believe. Eh, nah. I don't really want to go into creating right now. I'm just here to focus on the legacy mode. But, oh, wrong one. I need to go to load. Not that. Not start a new legacy. Schedule. All right, we'll go play our. Oh wait, no, we can't. Remind Dad about cleaning the church tomorrow night. Okay, Ma. Alright. I'm selling on a B for his kids. Oh, and he's already got a scholarship, though, so we may not be able to get him. Hold on, let me check something. Is the... Oh, yeah, it is. You guys are probably delayed a little bit. Uh, I need to check something real quick because this happened to me yesterday and I'm not going to let it happen again. <laughs> Give me a second. Okay, good thing I checked. Cause it's trying to happen again. <laughs> Dang, that was gonna, that was gonna happen again. Alright, that hopefully means you guys are gonna get better in just a few seconds. Select the, turn off the TV. Okay. So it uh, turned out I was downloading an update on my PlayStation 5 and I had no idea. Good thing I checked. So you guys are going to get better internet. Yeah, this time I just wanted to show off the two big uh, college hoops games. And again, I'd show off the last one that 2K made. But I don't have, or the last one that EA made, but I don't have A, a capture card, and a 360 copies of Basketball 10 and Color Troops 2K8, or B, I do not have a good enough computer to run 
NCAA Basketball 10 or College Hoops 2K8. Uh, now that I think about it, I'm gonna get this guy. Uh, we're gonna have to probably stick with the two story. Why don't we in? Why don't we invite? Campus. This is sunny. There we go. Yeah, we're just gonna probably have to stick with star athletes for now. Email. Oh, I got some spam. Do you have a secret? Secrets can be worth money. Call this number and tell us your secret, and we'll tell you how much it's worth. PS3 emulators exist. That's what I. That's I. That I know. But I do not believe there's a reliable Xbox 360 emulator at this time. At least, again, reliable one. I'm sure there are some's out there, but again, I don't think one that's there's one that's reliable. All right, well, let's offer this guy a scholarship since university, another Texas university offered him one. <laughs> Leave state to Peyton. We're the only one going after can go after him. And I can visit him at home. So it's time to go for the first... Uh... Uh. Oof, excuse me. Alright, so this guy might be our best shot. He's got great uh, rebounding. And he's pretty good. So that could help us out. Lynch could phone the boot. Alright, so these guys got great offense. But their defense is below average. Why not? Let's offer the scholarship. Although I don't think he's going to sign with us. Alright, let's try, let's try to play our first game of this series. Of this legacy. I'm not going to play all of them because we're going to be clearly smashed in a lot of it. To be honest, we're going to be outmatched for almost every game except our games. Meanwhile, let's take a look at our... Oh, somebody else wants Woodward. Let's go ahead and offer the scholarship. The only game we have is... Just winning, so I'll play that. It's just, uh, McNeese State here. Yeah, we, we weren't gonna win that game. And we were going up against then ranked Illinois, so we weren't gonna win that one either. Oh. Let's 
go ahead and visit the recruit. I'll phone him. We thought you'd like to know that we shipped you a gift today. Then that and that this completes your order. All right, yeah, we'll do CPU with the CPU. Uh, thanks for shopping at Tyrofoam Hammer Stock. See you again soon. We were never gonna go after this kid. And I don't Gabler. The recruit signing period has started. Yeah, UTEP is good. Yeah, this team. Oh, this team is good too. Our only shot might be. So he wants good coaching. Go ahead and scout the. He just wants he just wants to feel wanted. So I can go scout his game. Oh wait. And uh, I'll give him a phone call. Oh what's the spam? I didn't see what's the spam note this Consolidate your debt. Combine all those little bills into one big bill. Just pay us a lot of money and you'll be on your way to freedom. And you'll be on your way to freedom. Freedom for money. Alright, we'll do CPU versus CPU here. Uh, it's McNeese State versus Southern. Let's go. Let's see, we got a bit of a... We're even on shooting and rebounding. And defense. But they got a better offense, so let's see how it goes. Welcome everyone, it's almost game time here at the Health and PE Arena in Houston, Texas. We should have a great one in store for you today. The McNeese State Cowboys take on the Texas Southern Titans. Hi everyone, here with Bill Raftery and Bonnie Bernstein, I'm Vern Lundquist. The Texas Southern head coach looks determined as he leads his troops into battle today. Bill, the Texas Southern coach. Has his guns nah. ready for this This is where the lag starts to come in. I would love to have been there for his when they go close ups on the bench. Fire in his eyes right now. The McNeese State head coach has his guys prepared for the matchup today. Your thoughts, Bill? The McNeese State coach specializes in strong offense, Vern. He may not have that reputation of a great offensive genius, but believe me, he's working on it. Bruce will probably play an important role today. Bruce is a superb point guard. He's absolutely deadly from three-point range. You can't let him get those open looks. Christensen will likely be a large factor on the other side. Christensen can also hold his own at the point. He's got fantastic ball handling ability. He can make defenders look foolish sometimes. Thanks, Bill. Uh, it game. Like we're ready for the tip ball. Not the best angle day game. And there's the tip and we're underway. Let me change the uh, camera angle to a better... There we go. Better one when I tested it out. Controls the tip off and we'll get this one started. Haney yeah, the only issue you back. see is with this. Alright, right, so we got the rebound. Look at him fight for the board. That's how it's done, Vern. Shoots it. Nope. Haney grabs the rock. Nice now let's check in with the third member of our team, Bonnie Bernstein. Bonnie? Well, guys, earlier today I spoke with the head coach. Aww, of the that's Tigers. an easy two. Telling me we're looking for a little R&R oh, okay. in this game. Rebounds and 
more rebounds. He said it will be the most important battle in this game. We need to win it on the glass. We need to control the boards like I so Like I said, today is enjoy. day two of the NCAA tournament that? officially. Ah, uh, blocked. This game. Thanks, Bonnie. McNeese State takes it up court. They lead two to zero. Yeah, the only issue I have is just, I guess, this. This game has... Swings it to the right uh, side. This game goes to 45 frames per second. At least on my computer. If I had a capture card, it would easily go to 60 frames. And we're already down 4 nothing. Sure, yeah. Sure, team, you go for it. Texas Southern brings it up. Under nine minutes left in the half. Passes it far side. Now let's see what he can do. Shoots from There we go. Feet. First bucket of the Tennis game for us. One. Tough shot. He can stroke it when he gets it going a little bit. So as you can see, this game is the game engine is the same as the NBA 2K6 engine. Tries to back down. Shoots it. Nope, missed it. We got the rebound. Come on, go, go, go. Oh, slams it home, knocks the player down, and they gotta call a timeout. The Cowboys will bring in some players from off the bench. All right, just under two minutes to go in the first half. Yeah, technically 2K5. Oh, he nailed it, despite the pressure. I was saying 2K6 because uh, that was a new one. I think they redid the engine for the 360 version of the game. Fires and there we go, another long two-pointer. Thanks again to, well, this time by number 12. They're playing a 2-3 zone with minimum principles. The tough shot. All right, so we're tied up. All right, passing it up into the paint, number 55. Backs in. Eh, I would have thrown back to the corner three over there, but hey, whatever gets us the points. He got double covered, but he was confident enough to take the inside shot and nail it for two. So we get the first lead of the game. We get our first lead of the game, I should say. After taking a nice friendly bounce into the net. The Cowboys bring it up, and it's a two-point game. Pass, top of the key. Hey, buddy. Glad you're here. All right, passing it up to the left side. Oh, he's got it all on his own. Bounce and in. Now the lead's up to four, thanks to our point guard. All right, three minutes in. Texas Southern leads. Mackney State, 10 to 6. Shot and nailed it. Okay, make that ten to eight. Uses the glass to get the sweet jumper to fall. All right, number eleven to number two. Turned up the screen, but nobody followed him. To eleven, to twelve. He shoots, and it rims out. Here's number 10 with it. Of course, because there's a CPU versus CPU, I can't see any of the players' names. Tries to post him up. And shot and just like that. Mackney State just tied it up. Up 
us and the Wildcats are looking, or Tigers, sorry, are looking for our first win of the 2005-2006 season. Well, yeah, they wanted to make it original. And the game does use, at the time, CBS commentators. The Cowboys bring it up. They're shooting 62% from the field. Backs down. Oh, tipped it. Offensive rebound. They don't get the putback. So we're still tied at 10 with 544 to go. Find a little cross move. He can't get in. Passing it to number two. Over to 12. Shoots it. Gets it to go. And McNeese State calls another timeout. The Cowboys will go with a different look out there. The Cowboys take it up court. About five and a half minutes <laughs> left in the half. All right, here we go. Pass. Passing it to the right, right side. Looking for somebody. We're going to get another tie. Yes, we are. Yes. Well Number 22 gets it to fall. To take that shot, and he didn't think twice. Both well, taking the same amount of shots, approximately. Dawson, Dawson for three. No, he can't get it to fall. Target by two to me. They can reclaim the lead with a bucket here. Five minutes to go, just about. Tries to As back down. Post down. A post up. Sorry. Goes up lead. inside. No. The Tigers. Oh, he's going up on his own. Takes the shot. Was looking for a foul. He doesn't get it. Too strong in the attempt by Bruce. And instead, McNeese State gets the defensive rebound. Down low. You love to see him in there. Takes the Take shot. The Good. What a swish. Texas <laughs> Southern takes it up. All right, there you go. He's looking for open opportunities, but he can't get any. Over to number eleven. Yes, I know. Passes to the corner. There you go, passing it over, and again, pump fakes, shoots, takes advantage of the over-anxious defender. Yes, I know. He's so dangerous, State takes it up court. Just over State. All right, trying to get it back inside, takes the fadeaway jumper. No. And Texas Southern gets the rebound. The fast break. Oh, there he goes. Tried to juke it inside twice, but it didn't work. Instead, he goes with a turnaround jumper, and it works. You can tell our bad attendance here. And there we go. McNeese State brings it up. All right, less than four minutes to go in the first the half. Mutumbo swings it to the oh, top. There's a Mutumbo in a fake name world. Oh, he struggled to get the shot off. He still gets it and nails it. And we got to call timeout. We'll take its first timeout. All right, we're switching pretty much the whole lineup. And so is McNeese State pretty much. Texas Southern brings it up. The score is tied. I can't believe it because it's March. That's how it always goes. All right, pass it back up to the inside. Fade away jumper. I think that was blocked. McNeese State. It was. So McNeese State gets it up the court. Three and a half minutes left in the half. That's up the middle. Number 12. Oh, that's a foul. And now McNeese State shoots two. He misses the first shot. Takes the second shot. That one falls. So now Magny State takes the lead by one. The Tigers take it up court. They're eight. Meanwhile, let's go take a look at some meal tournament games that are in progress. As he takes the fadeaway jumper, it's good. Texas Southern takes the lead. Back and forth, back and forth. What a game. Oh, never mind. I can't because apparently there's an update. They're playing a 2-3 zone burn, trying to clamp down on the inside game. Pass. Left corner. 
Oh, Calvin with the foul, so that means Mac needs to stay shooting too. I'm doing good. How are you guys today? I only two games in progress at the moment. We got uh, La Loya Chicago versus Ohio State. They're tied at 11 at the moment. And the game between Jacksonville State and the Auburn Tigers just got recently got underway. It's 5-5 at the moment. And that's all we got going right now. Makes it up court. They're trailing by one. Yes, it is. Okay, meanwhile, Magni State got both free throws to fall, so it's 19 to 18. Shoots it. No, covered just enough to get the block. Oh, no, just the miss, I should say. Shoots it. That was as open as you would like. And now Magni State takes a three-point lead. The Tigers take it up court. 2.43 left in the first half. <laughs> All right, here we go. See if we can get anything good. Inside. No, off the front rim and out. Inside by Brock. The defense did a nice job. But when you get in deep, you've got to finish. Pass right side. Take the pass. Mutombo passes He's on the, the corner. corner. He goes hard inside and Gets nails it. In. I know people do. I don't. <laughs> Texas Southern brings it up. It's a five point game. I know. I don't. <laughs> Everybody knows about President Obama's uh, tournament picks. The Cowboys will go with a different look out there. All right, both sides changing it up. Haney passes it to the wing. All right, so the lead's down to three. And the foul. That means they'll once again be shooting two from the line. For a three-point play. But he'll go to the line for two. And he misses the first, luckily. And he makes the second. Texas Southern brings it up. They're shooting 55% from the floor. Unfortunately, McNeese State's shooting better from the floor. Skip pass. Passing it over Top to the big the man key. outside. And Darer shooting it up. The right there we go. The and the lead is cut to two with a minute 30 to go in the half. Look at it again. The Cowboys bring it up, and it's a two-point game. Sails in. And that's a loose ball foul on number 12, so it's guaranteed two for Tiger's ball. Two to me. Backs go. him down. Step back. Shoots it. Too strong. The yes, I know. That's what people use. Court. 113 left in the first half. All stolen. Picked off by Calvert. Bad decision, Vern. I know what he was thinking, but you can't just go ahead right, and over to the right side, number like 15. That. Driving up pass, the court. Nope. Top of the key. Trying to pass it to Kane the inside this time. Backs in. No, he up. fades it. And we're tied Kane just like tied that. After that bucket by Haney. All right, so we're tied up with less than a minute to go in the first half. Seconds left in the first half. Haney and shoots. That is affected. And the Tigers recover. Oh, no, that was a block. Somehow reached the basket still. 
They're gonna try to hold as long as they can so they can get so they can get a couple shots off if they need to. Alright, passing it over. Trying to slow down that clock. Oh no. Oh no. That's a steal. And they're gonna pass it up. Nope, they found the open shot, and they get it to fall. Nice job getting the ball in tight. That's the way to work it for an easy shot. Alright, five seconds left. Calvert. Over to the inside. Shoots it. And he misses it. And that concludes the okay. first half. The score, 26 to 24. Now that we've reached the halfway point, Bill, what do you think about the goings on in the first half? We've seen good execution on the offensive end from both teams. They've been finding and making good open shots. The Cowboys hold the slimmest of margins. Brock has been unstuck. Can I skip? Yeah, let's skip ahead. It's going way too slow. Holloway inbounds. I only accept slowness in the actual away. game. Bruce passes to Pass. the right wing. For the lead. And that's a missed shot. And the Cowboys and take it up. Third rebound of the contest. Let's send it down to Barney Bernstein. Thanks, Vern. At the break, I talked with the head coach of the Cowboys. He told me despite pulling ahead in the first half, there's still an awful and they make it. for improvement. And boy, let me tell you, he was seething. His players have been blowing it at the line. He told me, look, if we can't drain our free throws, we got no shot at this game. So, Vern, let's see if that winds up coming into play here in the second half. Thanks, Vonnie. All right. Pass left side. All right, over it takes the Releases. shot and went in Can't and then out. The Cowboys now they gotta, gotta run up the middle. And what a jumper! That's it's now a good. six point lead for the Cowboys. Texas Southern takes it up. Here we go. Up right the nine minutes left in the second half. All right, over to the corner. No, up the middle. The right over the inside shot. The layup Bounces off the rim, but goes in. On fire. How can you not love this kind of game? Christensen brings it up the floor. He's got four assists. Right, pass number 22. Cross court. Takes the shot. The from that was practically no pressure at all. He gets the shot to fall, and the lead goes back to six. Texas Southern brings it up, and it's a six-point game. Right, passing it to the front end of the court. Top of the key. Over to 11 Bruce in the paint. He takes the shot, but that gets blocked. Came up with and steal. he is all alone. Easy lay-in. Right in. These teams are scoring, that's for sure. But now they need to put on the same kind of effort at the defensive end. So I take back what I said about being able to compete in the pre in the non-conference games. Looks like we can only compete in the conference games. Well, we did get the offensive rebound. By two to me. Holloway swings it to the top of the key. Why do I have my arms up? Gets the bucket. <laughs> Eighteen feet. All right, we made it, but looks like they want to make a change. So Macney State calls a timeout. The Cowboys bring it up. They're shooting sixty-two percent for the game. Pass. Top of no, I only have the CBS games. The 
And the three-pointer is good. McNeese State is just running away with it. Tigers take it up court. They trail 37 to 28. Pass inside. In the paint, shoots it, gets it to go. Let's just skip ahead, please. We gotta move along. <laughs> McNeese State. Takes it up court. Just over seven minutes left in the second half. Haney passes to the baseline. Up. No, not the this time. Was off the mark by Lettenberger. If he, Yo, he was looking for a way to get up. Passes it into the inside. Shoots it. Wants a foul. Can't get it. And they and McNeese State gets the rebound. Right. It the Pass it near the hoop. Hook he shot. No, can't get it to fall. Payne pulls it in. Payne brings it up. He's got nope. 10 points. Passing it over to the right side. He's got a little bit of space. I don't know if he's going to want to take the shot. Robert passes it to the top of the key. Bruce passes in. You sit from the free throw line. No good. By Haney. The Cowboys bring it up. They're leading 37 to 30. All right. All right over to the left of the hoop. Looking for a shot. He gets one, and it falls. The lead goes back to nine. Falls time. Shot a call timeout. 6-10 to go in the game. Take it up court. Just over six minutes left in the second half. It goes for two. No. It's right rim and doesn't fall. McNeese State brings it up. A basket here would give them a double-digit lead. Go looking for... An open shot, they find one, and it falls. Another three. And this game is looking out of reach already. Texas Southern takes it up court. They're shooting 48% from the field. Pass. High post. You sit. Good. By Dawson. That was a gamble. The defense was there, but he forced it through. McNeese State brings it up. Ten points separating the teams. Okay. Gives the up fake. Shoots it. It's good. Haney is on fire. The Tigers take it up court. Just over five minutes left in the second half. All right, just over five minutes to go in the game. Shoots it for three. No. Haney reels it in. When you force that kind of shot, it's just going to hurt your offense. Go over to the corner. He shoots for three. It's good. I said thank you. Texas Southern takes it up court. They're shooting 48% for the game. Go foul, and it doesn't fall, so he'll take two at the line. Misses the first. The substitutions are taking place on the court. Mass substitutions here. And the second one falls. The Cowboys bring it up. They're on a 13 to 5 run. Passing it over to number 3. To number 10. Top of the key. Back and forth. He shoots. To the rack. Can't get it to fall, so he'll shoot two at the line. There's no arguing that call. He obviously got hacked on that shot. And he got it. That's the first one to fall.
He gets them both. The Tigers bring it up. They're trailing by 16. From 18 feet away. And missed it, but they get the offensive rebound. He takes the shot with three. No. But another offensive rebound is made, and they don't get that to go. We're not going to win this game, guys. As now he goes, well, he should have taken the shot. Here comes the shot, and good. This game has just completely gone out of hand. will go with a different look out there. The Cowboys will make some substitutions. Texas Southern brings it up. Under four minutes left in the second half. Tries to back him in. Oh, net on the shot by Haney. All right, there we go. We finally got a shot to fall. The Cowboys bring it up. They lead by 16. All right, here we go. Up the court, 3.30 to go in the game. All right, up the middle. Elliot nope, passed it back. back to the top of the key. You go, turns around, takes the shot. Doesn't go. From 11 feet. Payne brings it up. He's shooting 54% from the field. Bringing it up. Bruce Passing it over to the left side. side. Over to the middle. It's, you guys got the jump shot. Nope, doesn't go. This is a horrible shooting half for us. All Magni State has to do is just take smart shots and they win the game. You know, shots like that. That's now a 10-5 run for Magni State. We'll My dogs are going to go crazy yet again. Is back in the game after a short rest. Texas Southern My mom's gone for the weekend, and now they already the can't handle it. Takes the shot. The wing. No, it's another miss. McNeese State takes it up court. They should use some yeah. clock here. Okay, I guess I was wrong. It's an 18 to 5 run. They're in the home over the fern. And, and now they're just going to double team. Pass, top of the key. Go shot off the mid range. No. Rips it down. The Cowboys. Horrible game, and I'm sorry you guys had to witness it. Fades away inside. And nope, you can't get it. The Tigers. Bring it up. They're desperately trying to find a way to score. All right, back off the Calvert corner. Skips it to the middle. Turn around, Shoots jumper. It falls. Great job of getting the ball in the paint. And you can see quite the difference in terms of field goal percentages. Yeah, I'm okay. And boom! That's now a 15 to 5 run, technically. Right, they're trying to force this double team and turn over, and they do! Calvert steps out of bounds, and it's McNeese State's ball. They didn't have to do it, but they did. Dish. All right, crafting it up the middle. 
minute 15 to go in the game. They're just going to waste as much time as possible unless they can get an open shot. Spins. Spin move. It's stolen. By Calvert. That's his second steal of the contest. And it's the up. Finisher. And no good. The layup. Well, the deed did a nice job of throwing him off. No easy That's miss. a charge, and therefore it's a turnover. Elliot with the charge. That's it's one minute to go. It's too little, too late. The Cowboys will make some mass substitutions here on the court. They've got a lot of ground to make up. With the crossover. Here we go. Draws another block by Mackney State. That's the third one today. Block so far. Christensen backs him down. Lettenberger tries to back him in. And that's a miss, finally. And it was missed by Lettenberger. Two to me. Here we go. 35 seconds left. Just one more shot. That's it. Another it's miss, and this game is going to go down as a 20-plus point loss. And they can just sit on it to end the game. No, they're not going to sit on it. They want probably want another bucket. Backs in. Now they're just going to just move around. High post. Pass it back. Yeah, they, they are going to just sit on it. So a 20-point loss for Texas State. Or Tundra Texas Southern, sorry. It inside. Tries to Three, two, one. Oh, no, they want more, and they and do not. So a 20-point loss today for Texas Southern as Mackney State runs away with it in the That's second the half. 57 to 37. State blows out the Tigers. 57. Yes, thank you. So yeah, that's another big loss. May as well just simulate to the conference play. Because we're not going to win any of these games. And we almost beat in-state rivals, Texas... Yeah, one of our recruits that we wanted signed somewhere else. He's got average potential. Let's invite him to campus. Save your money. Save money on car insurance by buying a bicycle. Intelligence D. His leaping's out an F. You found the recruit. Yeah, we'll simulate because we're not gonna beat Florida State. Uh, okay. Well, no, that's no, that's that's okay. There it is. There you go. You're right. There it is. My mistake. <laughs> Let's make it. Start. All right. All he wants is good coaching. Lost the call, that's pretty great. Alright, some in there. No, that's not right. How do you. Yeah, we almost beat him that time. And we almost beat McNeese State, but we're still on a cold streak. How do I get players more minutes? Yeah. 
Yes, because he has the rights to those. Nope, still nothing. Our team is just terrible. We're gonna go 0 and 10 in conference and non conference. <laughs> I don't think we're gonna get this guy. Yep, we went 0 and 10. Yeah, there we go. We get our first conference win against uh, Alcorn State. minutes per game. How do I fix that, though? Coaches meeting? No. Daily view? No. Management? Rosters? Oh, I forgot about the news feature. This one focused on the legacy. I think it's loading. That doesn't look like a good thing for us. Uh, management. Oh yeah, I guess coaches profiles here. Yeah. Start is all. Southern beats us this time. How about Prairie View? Nope, we got the win against them. So we're starting off decent, two and one. Looks like we're only gonna get. There we go. Last opportunity. Oh, you know what? Let me phone him too. First match. We got the win. Is that Jackson? And no surprise, they got the win this time. Nope. Uh, no. Let's see how we do here. What am I supposed to do? I don't know how to raise their minutes. Got the loss against Mississippi Valley. We did beat uh, Arkansas and Pine Bluff, so we're still pretty even, it seems. He's got good potential, so he could get better with another with another scalp. We can get this guy. Simulate again.
Did I say update? As we lose to Alabama State. Do we beat Alabama A&M? Nope. Yeah, this isn't going to be a good season. Got No, that's the wrong guy. This guy's well. Let's invite him to campus. Alright, how about against Pro if you get a time Bailey? That puts us at uh, 5 and 15 this season. as low as possible then. See if that makes a difference. Yeah, what does it remind you of? We barely get the win against Grambling. Barely get the loss against Jackson State. Yeah, that, that makes sense. So the recruits then. How about we offer the scholarship and I'll phone the recruits? big set of games in a couple weeks that'll determine the seeding as we get a blowout loss to Mississippi Valley and we barely lose to Arkansas Pine Bluff he's not concerned with getting playing time We're about to end the recruiting segment. Let's see if we get some wins. Nope. Nope, they're still unhappy. I don't get it then. Alright, it's time for conference tournament play. To oh no, we don't even get one. We didn't even make it in. Oh. Yeah, so we're out. We're not even going to make it. Had a worse season. Yeah. Let's just watch the selection show, see who else, who did make it into the 65 team tennis. Every year in this country, the tournament adds life to spring. But it's not until the brackets are filled that March Madness springs to life. The map of the madness, the brackets, are only moments away from bringing the tournament to life. Good evening, everyone. I'm Greg Gumbel. Welcome to the NCAA Championship Basketball Selection Show. I'm joined here at the anchor desk by my partner, Clark Kellogg. All right, get your pencils and your brackets ready. We're ready to bring you the exclusive live announcement of the seedings and the pairings for this tournament. First, some background details. Of the 65 available tournament bids, 31 are automatically given to conference champions. 
There are 34 at-large bids. An opening round game will be on Tuesday night to narrow the field to 64 teams. Before we get to the unveiling of this year's brackets, let's take a look at the final top 25 media poll of the season. We have a couple of changes in the rankings this week. One team made a huge move in the poll. The Nevada Wolfpack jumped all the way from the number 12 spot to number 7. They'll certainly be trying to keep that momentum going into the tournament. Also, a new team has broken into the top 25. The Iowa Hawkeyes return to the poll as the number 24 team. And there you have it, the final top 25 poll of the season. Now we get to the part of the show where we look at all the teams that are out there holding their breath right now. I don't know if it'll work. These are the 10 teams that may or may not be on their way to the big dance. Clark, any teams that jump out at you here on this list? The Clemson Tigers have the benefit of playing in one of the major conferences, and that will certainly give them an edge over the teams from the lesser conferences. You're right about that, and there are plenty of teams in the same boat with them. The Miami Hurricanes are a team I really like. It would be great to see them in the tournament, and I hope the committee takes a good, hard look at their resume and the talent of this team. Well, they won't have to wait much longer. In just minutes, the whole country will know who's in and who's out. With that, let's get right to it and unveil this year's number one seeds in the NCAA tournament. The Duke Blue Devils are the top overall seed who will play in the Washington, D.C. regional. They may not be number one in the media poll, but the folks on the tournament committee think awfully highly of this team. We'll soon find out if they're deserving of that top billing. On to the second number one seed who will play in the Atlanta Regional. The Oklahoma Sooners are trying to win their first ever NCAA championship. The UCLA Bruins are the third number one seed, and they'll play in the Minneapolis Regional. They're obviously no stranger to postseason play, with the experience of last year's NCAA tournament appearance still fresh in the minds of the veteran players. And finally, our fourth and last number one seed will play in the Oakland Regional. The Wake Forest Demon Deacons are in the tournament field as a number one seed for the first time in the history of their program. That's one happy group. Getting a top seed is definitely worth celebrating. That's just what they're going to do. Now, here's how the brackets shape up based on where the number one seeds have been assigned. In one national semifinal game, the winner of the Washington, D.C. Regional will play the winner of the Atlanta Regional. In the other semifinal game, the winner of the Minneapolis Regional will play the winner of the Oakland Regional. Those games will be played on Saturday, April 1st. Then it'll be on to the national championship game on Monday night, April the 3rd. We now know who the number one seeds are. What do you think? There are a few other teams there that could make a claim to a top seed, but the selection committee's opinion is the only one that matters, so they're just going to have to accept what the committee has decided. So with the number one seeds out of the way, it's finally time to tackle the rest of the brackets. We look first at the Washington, D.C. Regional. The Duke Blue Devils are the top seed, finishing at 23 and 10. Winners of the ACC Conference Tournament. They'll take on the winner of the opening round game, the American Eagles, with 14 wins. Take on the St. Francis Red Flash out of the Northeast Conference. And now the number eight seed, the Texas Longhorn. Come into the tournament fifth in their conference during the regular season and were quarter finalists in their conference tournament. They're going to play the number nine seed, the Syracuse Orange, who were third in their conference, finishing at 17 and 11. The George okay. Washington Colonial enter the field as the number four seed. Coming out of the A-10, this will be their eighth appearance ever in the NCAA tournament. They'll be getting ready to face the number 13 seed. The Washington State Cougars finished the season with 16 wins. They're the tournament champions of the Pac-10. The Memphis Tigers come in as the number five seed. This is their 18th appearance all time in the NCAA tournament. And they will take on the 12th seed out of the Mid-Continent Conference. The Oral Roberts Golden Eagles are their conference regular season and tournament winners after just a tremendous season for them. Next up is the number two seed. The Michigan State Spartans are the regular season champions of the Big Ten. They'll be going up against the number 15 seed, the Pepperdine Waves, with 14 wins. This marks their 13th appearance in the NCAA tournament in school history. Our number seven seed is out of the Atlantic Sun Conference. The East Tennessee State Buccaneers had a tremendous year that included a regular season championship. They are going to play the number 10 seed, the Marshall Thundering Herd, who were regular season champions in their conference, finishing at 19 and 10. And now the number three seed, the Villanova Wildcats, come into the tournament fifth in their conference during the regular season and were losers in their first game at their conference tournament. They're on their feet back on campus as their spot in the brackets is unveiled. Get a look at that celebration. 
the Hofstra Pride, come in to face them at number 14 with 17 wins and a Colonial Athletic Conference Tournament Championship behind them. The Colorado Buffaloes are in as the number six seed. They'll be taking on the number 11 seed. The Western Kentucky Hilltoppers come in as tournament champions of the Sun Belt Conference. You're really going to want to keep an eye on this bracket. There's the possibility of some great second and third round games here. You never know what's going to happen in the first round, but if everything goes according to form, this could make for some very entertaining matchups. Is there any one team that stands out to you there? The Memphis Tigers are one of those teams that's hard to put a finger on. They've got a terrific squad, but they depend on a lot of young players, and that lack of experience can be a big factor. Sometimes young guys play a lot looser than the veterans, but it's always a tough call. They really could go either way on you. Next up, we'll take a look at the Atlanta Regional. The Oklahoma Sooners are the top seed, finishing at 22 and 7. Winners of the Big 12 Conference regular season. They'll take on Mississippi Valley State's Delta Devils, the number 16 ranked team. This is their third appearance all time in the NCAA tournament. And now the number eight seed, the Oklahoma State Cowboys, come into the tournament after finishing second in their conference during the regular season and were semifinalists in their conference tournament. And check out the happy scene as their place in the brackets is confirmed. Looks like it's party time. The Kansas Jayhawks come in to face them at number nine with 18 wins and a Big 12 Conference Tournament Championship behind them. The San Diego State Aztecs come in as the number four seed. This marks their fourth appearance in the NCAA Tournament in team history. And they'll take on the 13th seed out of the Ohio Valley Conference. The Murray State Racers are their conference tournament winners and have become hot at the perfect time of the season. We'll see if they can keep it up. The Arkansas Razorbacks enter the field as the number five seed coming out of the SEC. This is their 27th appearance in the NCAA tournament in the history of their school. They'll be getting ready to face the number 12 seed, the New Mexico Lobos. Finished the season with 19 wins. They're the tournament champions of the Mountain West Conference. Our number two seed is out of the ACC. The Maryland Terrapins were rewarded for their outstanding play this season with an at-large bid and a ticket to the big dance. They're going to play the number 15 seed, the Coastal Carolina Chanticleers, who came in first in their conference tournament, finishing at 15 and 11. Next up is the number seven seed. The LSU Tigers have established themselves as one of the best teams out of the SEC. They'll be going up against the number 10 seed, the Iowa State Cyclones, with 15 wins. This marks their 13th appearance ever in the NCAA tournament. The Connecticut Huskies are in as the number three seed. This is their fourth trip in a row to the NCAA tournament. They'll be taking on the number 14 seed, the UCF Golden Knights. Come in as tournament champions of Conference USA. And now the number six seed, the Iowa Hawkeyes, come into the tournament after finishing second in their conference during the regular season and winners of their conference tournament. They are going to play the number 11 seed, the Marist Red Foxes, who came in first in their conference tournament, finishing at 22 and seven. I'm sure everybody wants to know where to look for potential Cinderella teams. I'd say this bracket is the place. A lot of the lower seeds have the potential to knock off the big boys if rooting for the underdog is your favorite part of the NCAA tournament, then keep an eye on this one. Anything special that jumps out at you in that bracket? The Connecticut Huskies are a team that is just so powerful and strong up front. I would put their front court up against just about any other teams in the nation right now. It's always good to have strong guard play, but if you ask most coaches, I guarantee you they take the good big man over the good little man most times. Their interior play should serve them very well in this competition. Our third regional breakdown of the day. Let's take a look at the Minneapolis Regional. The UCLA Bruins are the top seed, finishing at 25 and 8. Runners up of the Pac-10. They'll take on the Lipscomb Bison, the number 16 ranked team in the NCAA tournament in the history of their school. Our number 8 seed is out of the Big East. The Pittsburgh Panthers were rewarded for their outstanding play this season with an at-large bid and a ticket to the big dance. They're going to play the number nine seed, the Vanderbilt Commodores, who were semifinalists in their conference tournament, finishing at 18 and 11. The Washington Husky enter the field as the number four seed, coming out of the Pac-10. This is their 12th appearance ever in the NCAA tournament. They'll be getting ready to face the number 13 seed, the St. Joseph's Hawks. Finished the season with 18 wins. They're the tournament champions of the A-10. The Wisconsin Milwaukee Panthers are in as the number five seed. They'll be taking on the number 12 seed. The Lamar Cardinals come in 
as regular season and conference champions of the Southland Conference. And now the number two seed, the Creighton Blue Jays, come into the tournament first in their conference during the regular season and finish second in their conference tournament. They're on their feet back on campus as their spot in the brackets is unveiled. Get a look at that celebration. The Florida A&M Rattlers come in to face them at number 15 with 21 wins and a MEAC Conference Tournament Championship behind them. Next up is the number seven seed. The Northern Iowa Panthers have established themselves as one of the best teams out of the Missouri Valley Conference. They'll be going up against the number 10 seed, the Clemson Tigers, with 17 wins. This marks their seventh appearance in the NCAA tournament in school history. And now the number three seed, the Tennessee Volunteers, come into the tournament on the strength of a third place finish in their conference regular season and were losers in their first game at their conference tournament. They are going to play the number 14 seed, the Princeton Tigers, who were regular season champions in their conference, finishing at 16 and 10. The Virginia Cavaliers come in as the number six seed. This is their 15th appearance all time in the NCAA tournament. And they take on the 11th seed out of the Horizon League. The Flames of Illinois Chicago are their conference tournament winners. Now they'll try to win another tournament. Only this one has a field of 64. First thing that comes to mind when I look at this bracket is that if the top two seeds advance to the Elite Eight, we could have an absolute whale of a regional final. That could be the game of the tournament right there. What do you think about that one, Clark? The Creighton Blue Jays have more to prove than any other team in this tournament. They haven't had a lot of experience in the tournament recently, so it's difficult to say exactly how they'll handle it. They've shown they're capable of playing with the best teams in the nation during the regular season. Now they need to show they belong with those teams come tournament time. The last but definitely not the least regional on the list, we'll take a look at the Oakland Regional. The Wake Forest Demon Deacons are the top seed, finishing at 23 and 8. Winners of the ACC Conference regular season. They'll take on the Tigers of the Pacific, the number 16 ranked team. This marks their seventh appearance in the NCAA tournament in team history. Next up is the number eight seed. The Virginia Tech Hokies have established themselves as one of the best teams out of the ACC. They'll be going up against the number nine seed, the Kentucky Wildcats. With 17 wins, they return once more to the very familiar surroundings of the NCAA tournament. And now the number four seed, the Nevada Wolfpack, come into the tournament first in their conference during the regular season and winners of their conference tournament. As you can see, the celebration is on. A great moment for this team and their fans. The Ball State Cardinal come in to face them at number 13 with 19 wins and a Mid-American Conference Tournament Championship behind them. The Bradley Braves come in as the number five seed. This marks their seventh appearance ever in the NCAA tournament and they will take on the 12th seed out of the Big East. The Rutgers Scarlet Knights are their conference tournament winners and will try to carry that momentum over when they play their first NCAA tournament game later this week. The Arizona Wildcats enter the field as the number two seed coming out of the Pac-10. This is their 24th appearance in the NCAA tournament in team history. They'll be getting ready to face the number 15 seed. The Vermont Catamounts finish the season with 16 wins. They're the tournament champions of the America East Conference. And now the number seven seed, the West Virginia Mountaineers, come into the tournament first in their conference during the regular season and were losers in their first game at their conference tournament. They are going to play the number 10 seed, the Boston College Eagles, who were semifinalists in their conference tournament, finishing at 18 and 14. The Alabama Crimson Tide are in as the number three seed. This is their fourth trip in a row to the NCAA tournament. They'll be taking on the number 14 seed. The Montana State Bobcats come in as tournament champions of the Big Sky Conference. Our number six seed is out of Conference USA. The Houston Cougars were rewarded for their outstanding play this season with an at-large bid and a ticket to the big dance. They are going to play the number 11 seed, the Georgia Southern Eagle, who came in first in their conference tournament, finishing at 20 and nine. Certainly looks to me that this bracket is gonna be the strongest of the four. They have several teams I think are capable not only getting to the final four, but of winning it all and even some of the lower seeds here have the potential to advance. This is a really deep, really difficult bracket. Well, Clark, what's your impression of the teams in the final bracket? The Rutgers Scarlet Knights are fresh off the championship of one of the toughest conference tournaments in all of college basketball, and you can't underestimate the effect that has on the confidence of these young men. I'm sure they're thinking that anything is possible right now. I think you've definitely got to look at them as one of the most dangerous teams in the entire field. 
There's no more need for talk. Now we have all the facts. Tell us what you think about the tournament's top 16 seeds. The Nevada Wolfpack were deserving of a better seed in my mind. They finished the season as the number seven team in the country. It's beyond me how they wind up in the tournament as a four seed, the Tennessee Volunteers. As a three seed, probably won't scare too many people in the field. I'd rather have to face them than a few of the teams that are seeded five and six. The most shocking thing about the top 16 is the lack of any representatives out of Conference USA. Obviously, the committee did not show a lot of respect to that conference, and maybe they don't deserve any. Now, let's look at the breakdown by conference. The ACC gets seven teams. The SEC with six. Six out of the Big 12. The Big East gets six teams. The Pac-10 with four. Four out of Conference USA. What a tremendous year for teams out of the Missouri Valley Conference. They got the most bids of any mid-major, and if they keep this up, we might remove that mid and call them a major conference pretty soon. And let's not forget the teams out of the Atlantic Sun Conference. Those squads had a great year. They put fear in the big boys more than once this season, and one of those teams could be a sleeper pick in this tournament. I can't believe there's only two teams out of the Mountain West Conference. What a disappointing year for that conference. The balance of power is cyclical. It shifts amongst the major conferences, and they better hope it's going to swing back in their favor soon. We talked about the bubble teams earlier. Now let's check back on them and see who got their ticket punched. What do you think of the list now, Clark? The Clemson Tigers can finally exhale. I don't think there was a lot of doubt that they'd make it, but we've seen good teams get left out before, and you just know this was a nerve-wracking day for this squad. Absolutely, and I know we have a few more teams on the list that are celebrating. The Boston College Eagles caught the eye of the selection committee with what we call quality wins against tough opponents. They beat some top 20 teams this year, and that makes a huge difference when you're on the bubble. Well, we know there are a few teams on the other side of the equation that weren't too thrilled to get the bad news today. The Mississippi Rebels really didn't do themselves any favors with their dismal finish to the season. Unless you've had just an unbelievable start to the year, you're usually not going to overcome that kind of struggle at the end of the season. Not a happy day on that campus, that's for sure, but they'll have some company when it comes to watching the tournament on television this year. The Old Dominion Monarchs have the misfortune of not playing in a major conference, and we know that always is a handicap, at least on some occasions, come Selection Sunday. They had a great year, but now it's NIT. Here we come. Well, partner, I think we're ready to start the real show. What do you say? Well, Greg, that sounds good to me. I think it's going to be an incredible tournament. I can't wait until we actually throw the ball up in the air and get these games started. So for my partner, Clark Kellogg, and the rest of us here in the studio, I'm Greg Gumbel signing off. Now, let the madness begin. All right. So we had a bad season. Nothing left we could do but simulate. Oh, we do get a play conference, and yeah, there he goes. They you said they saw it early in the broadcast. Oklahoma is looking for their first championship. They got it. Oh. The year, player of the year, person of the year. Yeah, we finished uh, seven and twenty-one horrible year, but we do get an increase. Let's increase our defense. One of the features here was the coach carousel, where if you coached long enough, you could, and you had a good record, you could get into one of the biggest colleges if you wanted to. Go ahead and there you go. I still like all the coaches we got this time. No one heard. Okay. Oh. We can import the draft class into uh, NBA 2K6 if we wanted to. Organization prides itself on winning. It's just the guy who's going to. We got one player at least. We got Simpson on the team. Oh, uh, okay. We did get a three star athlete. That's good. 
Which we can recruit these guys again. Maybe we'll do a home visit. We did get a couple of plays though, so that's good. <laughs> Protect your families from the danger of dihydrogen monoxide. Ask. Okay. Where did he end up going to? Oh, well, that was a different guy. Windward did say yes, so we need a. He's got average potential. Let's see. Do you have any other interest from a three star athlete? Woodward, maybe. But that's a huge at this point. I may as well let the computer handle this. As we just go right on to next season, then. Sorry, the stream hasn't become much, guys. I'm sorry. Let's go into next season. We only had three scholarships, so we couldn't really see players. Save money on your car and buy a bicycle. New Herbal Supplement provides more daily energy. Side effects include mild, are generally mild or may include fatigue, dizziness, cerebral hemorrhage, nausea, and Have you tried sleeping upside down? It's really quite good. Head over to Inverted Sleep. Check it out. So I'll just let the computer handle these because I don't know how to handle these apparently. But I believe we may have ended up with a weaker team altogether. Oh, that's why. Yeah, simulate the camps. Now I can check out recruiting again. We'll simulate, uh, I'll let the game handle it. We'll simulate one more season, see if we can at least make it to the conference tournament this time. And I'll just let the computer handle everything. We'll click the link, you can see for yourself. Uh, we don't watch the... Preview show this time. Oh, 
hey, we actually won a non-conference game. That's a story. Oh, we won two of them. Are we going to have a better record this year? Nope. And we're gonna be Kansas State. Oh, 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 okay. Okay, the game wants to offer me scholarship suggestions. I'll do it. Go ahead and offer him the scholarship. Nah. Oh, I got a win over Wyoming. Scout. Hey, maybe we'll have a good season this year. And at least make the conference tournament. We just need more than uh, seven wins and I actually improve our team to a, get a better record. Out. Let's see if we can win our first conference game against Jackson State at five and two. Nope. Right against Southern. Yep, there we go. Uh, nope, we couldn't beat Montana. Or Mississippi Valley State. This still might not end up being a good enough year for us to move on. Should still see how we play against them, though. Well, I meant how our rating compares to them. 1.6. Yeah, technically, we're slightly. Okay. Actually got good potential. Mm 
We barely got the win against Prairie View. We just need one more win to get a better record. We get it against Scrambling? Nope. How about against, uh... Alabama? Nope. Okay, I should have just turned off, like, players leaving early or something. No, now we're on a losing streak. Uh-oh. Four in a row. I don't think we're gonna make the conference tournament then at this rate. There we go. Now we did it. Now we lost a player and we still can't beat Mississippi Valley State. We could get the win against Alcorn State. There you go, this is our first 10 win season. We did get the win against Scrambling. We're actually doing a be way better season. At least in terms of conference play. Because it's because as soon as we got on that losing streak, we got on a winning streak. And then we go, and then as soon as I say that, we lose. There we go. Okay, at this time, we have to make the conference tournament, don't we? Well, technically, the, it's not over, is it? Oh, here we go, conference. Oh yeah, technically it's not happened yet. There we go. We got Grambling in the first round. And we're pretty even, actually. <laughs> we'll actually play this one. We're actually better on offense and uh, rebounding. Welcome aboard, everyone. The tournament's about to get started, and we're ready to bring you all the action here at Parto Arena in Birmingham, Alabama. What a game we have in store for us today. The Texas Southern Tigers face off against... Oh, it's the Tigers versus the Tigers. Hi there. Along with Bonnie Bernstein and... Let's just move on. There go, we won the tip. Get the tip and we're underway. Passes far side. Ah. Uh, let's see how we can do this time. To back down. Oops, Takes he made it. Shot. No problem. Right Oops. Just, yeah, just... Let's yeah, just take the dunk. I made a mistake going deep with the pass. Oops. Yeah, um, let's just simulate. We're, we're, we're done. Final score, 40 to 30. At least we made it to the first round. That's a lot better than last year. All right. Well, I tried. I think I'm used to the... I hope that the one day there is a future college hoops basketball game that plays like NBA 2K, not just with the mods that we see now in PC games. But uh yeah, you know what, with that said, I'm gonna I'm gonna call it for today, everybody. Uh, I wanna thank you all so much for watching today's stream of College Hoops 2K6. I'm gonna probably go back to something else tomorrow. But until the next stream, everybody, thank you so much for watching. Have a great rest of your day, and take care. Goodbye, everybody, and I will see you all later.